Formula One launch week is finally upon us. We had the teaser of the Haas livery reveal last week and we got some proper images of the car as well, the 2019 car. But this week, the F1 cars are coming thick and fast and we're kicking things off with the Toro Rosso STR14. JBL's back with me and I'm gradually getting over my cold. JBL's fighting fit, so let's crack on. We've got visual aids this time, JBL, and inevitably, because of the rule changes, we're starting at the front wing again with the Toro Rosso. But we've got some, some good visuals here and, and an interesting look at how another team has taken a slightly different approach to what we saw from Haas last week. Yeah, definitely. We saw that the Haas front wing was a lot more sort of curved and sculpted. But if this was like, if there was a poster child for the new regulations and what they were trying to create, this would be it, I think. Um, it's a very, it's a lot more simple. Um, there's a lot less curvature in the sort of leading edge of the elements. And we can see the end plates as well. They're just very, very straight. Um, what you can sort of see is there's a general curve at the front and it lifts up towards the uh, outboard edge of the wing. And that sort of creates almost like a spoon sort of shape in the middle. And it's almost as if they're trying to induce some kind of outwash element through the shape of the wing rather than doing it through the end plates itself. So it's quite an interesting design. It's an interesting interpretation. Um, and then it sort of carries on it, the inboard uh, flap section here that's going to create a vortex that's going to be driven through the section here. And you can see a very, very aggressive set of turning vanes here, which should pick that up, try to unpack it and send it around the barge boards as well. And around the uh, mounting pylons as well, there are a few slots and that just sort of assists with that. So it's a very, very simplistic design. Um, what we can't see is any uh, little reinforcement points or the uh, flap adjuster. So it would be interesting to see how they actually integrate that into the actual proper front wing design. But yeah, it seems like quite an interesting, quite an interesting concept. And quite a good example then of the teams have had quite a lot of strong tools taken away in terms of dealing with the outwash around the front tyre and how they feed the air under the chassis. And you're saying that Toro Rosso have effectively shown us some of the new ways the teams are going to try and get aggressive with managing this airflow. Yeah, definitely. And then there's the minimised strakes as well. Like you could have loads before, and now it's mandated just two. And so they're going to have to use that to the maximum effect to create a vortex and drive it outboard so that it creates the sort of same effect that we would get with the old wings. Because we're not getting that now. The idea is to stop the amount of outwash being created to try and improve the overtaking but obviously teams want that back because that helps that producing downforce further down the car so yeah that's something they're trying to get back and they need to use all of the tools available really. F1 aerodynamicists never forget do they? No. Now one of the good things about this is that we've got a bright blue car on a nice light background. Haas last week were quite cheeky with their <laughs> images where it was a black car on a black background so we've actually got our best view yet of the 2019 barge boards because the rules have changed there as well. How have Torosso tackled that? Well, they're sort of, they're almost simplistic almost. So this section here, the start of the barge boards, if you like, that's essentially three flaps in, in succession. Now they're trying to produce this very, very aggressive angle. And the idea behind that is to just try and push as much airflow outboard as possible again and around the side pod undercuts. So, they're doing that and because it's going through quite a big angle, it's trying to keep it as attached as possible. Um, and then there are also these very, very curious little, almost dagger-like elements on the, the end of the barge board. And what that's doing is trying to take the tire wake that's being produced by the front tire and just sort of lift it out of the way and push it away. Um, also work with some of the flow off the barge board as well. It's also working with these turning vanes here as well to just try and minimize that wake, minimize the, negative effect I guess it has on the side pods and the floor and the rest of the car as well. And the side pods are the natural next point to look at. Now this is interesting from an aerodynamic perspective of course because the teams are always getting more and more aggressive with the undercut and how tight the packaging is but in Toro Rosso and this year Red Bull's case this is also interesting because it potentially tells us a few things about Honda and we know that Toro Rosso for example last year had to be a bit more generous with their packaging than we saw from McLaren when they were with Honda. I think Honda appreciated that because it gave them a bit of room to work with. But it would appear from this that there is some aggressive packaging going on now around the Honda components. So that's either a risk or a good sign, I guess. Yeah, definitely. It means that Honda have just been able to sort of push the performance envelope a little bit more. Um, we can't really see it on this image so well, but it's a very raised inlet as 
that's the trend that's going on now. It's pioneered by Ferrari in 2017, and that's what everybody seems to be going for now, using the um, deformable structure here and here as the sort of leading edge of the uh, the inlets, if you like. But it's actually split in half. There's actually a little shroud here, and the inlet begins at about this point here, really. So it's much smaller inlet, and that means that they're using uh, as much of the intake at the top of the car as possible. But yeah, this suggests that Honda really sort of pushed the envelope a little bit with their cooling. They've really managed to improve over the off season and yeah, hopefully, you know, they'll be able to continue along that trend of ensuring they've got better reliability than they ever did with McLaren perhaps. And one of the reasons Honda have to push the envelope this year is that Red Bull has come on board with its big team. Toro Rosso had almost the kind of guinea pig job last year of working out if the Honda was any good and if it was worth ditching the Renault contract. That decision's been made and that will mean that Toro Rosso and Red Bull will work a lot more closely together this year technically because they've got the same powertrain that they're working with so a lot of the packaging at the rear of the car can be quite similar. To a lot of people you'd think instantly okay so it's like Ferrari and Haas you can share a lot of the common parts that are allowed to be shared under the regulations but it would appear that Toro Rosso won't be pushing that all the way up to what the regulations allow. The team's still doing its own thing in a lot of areas, isn't it? Well, definitely, that's because the difference between Toro Rosso and Haas is Haas are uh, still essentially, even though they're designing the car, they're outsourcing the production to Dallara, um, Ferrari are providing essentially the entire rear end. Although Toro Rosso now have what is essentially going to be the same red, uh, rear end as Red Bull, um, they're still working along their own design philosophy and it does seem like it's an evolution of what they've been doing before but at the rear end um, them and Red Bull now have the same box to work from so whether that provides any cues as to what the Red Bull is going to look like this year we don't know perhaps there'll be some ideas that they'll be taking from Toro Rosso especially with Toro Rosso's year of development with Honda they'll now have some idea of what cooling requirement is needed what the rear end packaging is going to be like. So it, there's going to be some of the same bases to work from. But again, Toro Rosso, their own engineers have an experience of a certain package and Red Bull's engineers have an experience of a different package. So although there will be some sort of overlay between the two, um, they're still independent outfits essentially. So there is going to be some difference, but perhaps we can draw a few cues from what the Red Bull's going to look like. It's probably too early to say. Uh, the shape of the car has been uh, modified a lot, especially the sideboard shape. Uh, they look uh, as a section a little bit more similar to the, to the Red Bull. Last year there was a big undercut in the low section following all the sideboards going till to the back of the car. While uh, in this uh, new Toro Rosso, the undercut is at the beginning of the sideboards then uh, uh, we have the sideboards that are wider in the low section and narrower in the top section, a little bit like uh, uh, Red Bull last year. Intake of the, for the engine is quite big and uh, the rear wing has a central pillar that goes uh, directly inside the, the DRS uh, command. Quite uh, yeah, very interesting, it looks uh, like uh, a longitudinal fin uh, in the sidepods uh, that it seems uh, to be detached by uh, compared to the, the floor of the car, but of course uh, the, it's not possible to see very well from the picture, but uh, we, I believe that in this part of the car there will be some uh, new ideas that we will see at the testing of the car in Barcelona.